Well, you were injured all year. What have you done for us to talk to you about all year? I talked to you Tuesday. You just don't just talk. Don't say you're not talking because I didn't talk to you all year. You were also injured most of the season too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just relax. Just relax. I, can, okay. can I can I go to my family that I have outside? And all you can. Of a sudden now? Just just don't say we didn't talk to you we, all year. We just right? wanted to ask for your perspective on what happened. You, there. You're involved in one of the biggest plays of the game. <laughs> What's going on, guys? I'm Jada Black. Shout out to everyone that's tuning in. I want to talk about Giovanni Bernard. I don't know if this got a, a, a lot of media attention. It, it's starting to because there are others uh, like uh, Kevin Durant who are speaking out against the media's uh, treatment of Giovanni Bernard, right? Like they want to give this guy the third degree over a botched punt. I, I've never seen somebody, you know, be questioned like that by these entitled media people who feel like they're entitled to get questions and answers, okay? These are probably people who've never played a down of football in their life, and they don't understand how the process goes. So they think they can stand there and belittle people and like, well, we're the media and you're supposed to talk to us. This is why I wish they never allowed media in locker rooms. Or there's a set time to where you only speak to players uh, once they go and do interviews in the press room, um, allowing media in locker rooms to me is a total invasion of privacy. Uh, these players just had a, 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 a tough loss. And the fact that the media is allowed in the locker room right after to me is just I, I don't understand that. If they want to interview players, they should let the players go into the press room. Instead of like they, you know, I know they interview a lot of the top players, but if there are players like Giovanni, then they should ask the team for permission to have him go to the interview room to interview them. This is why media should never be allowed in locker rooms. And then you got this heifer here who's apologizing. Her name is Jenna Lane, right? Now, from the video that I saw, and I probably have a clip at the beginning of this video, she wasn't the only one that was getting de defensive. Uh, as well, there were others there because I tell you all the media is entitled. But because she was pointed out, because she was like, well, you were injured all season. Because Giovanni's like, y'all haven't want, talked to me all year. It's like, well, you've been injured all year. Right? And just the, just the entitlement, the smug behavior of these reporters. Right? They feel entitled to talk to these athletes. Right? These people have never, these are probably local media that have never accomplished anything in their life besides becoming a journalist, and they're probably not even that good at it. The only reason why she's apologized is because her voice was heard, and you know she is known, right? And you know, she, you know she's ESPN, right? And now she's apologizing because she realized a lot of those players are upset at her, and there's a lot of fans upset too, right? Because the vi the video clip that I shared is actually on her Twitter. And she tries to to explain, and this is according to Awful Announcing, she tries to explain and clarify, you know, why they were being the way that they were, right? But let's get into the apology. Well, first, let's get, let's get into this. Let's get into this. Let's take another look at this video, right? Well, you were injured all year. What have you done for us Sorry. to talk to you about all year? I, I talked to you Tuesday. You, what, just don't, what, just talk. Don't say you're not talking because I didn't talk to you all year. You were also injured most. See, I see. It wasn't just her that was being disrespectful and being defensive. I won't say disrespectful. I say being defensive towards him. There were other people as well being defensive. Can I go to my family that I have outside? And you all can. Of a now? Just, just don't say we didn't talk to you. We, all year. we just wanted to ask for your perspective on what happened you, there. You're involved in one of the biggest plays in the game. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Duke. I appreciate that's your all. time. We do. We won't hold you. We, we would have talked to you in the season, but okay, also you were that's injured. That's just tell us what occurred on the on the punt. Miscommunication. That's all it was on my part. I take complete fault for that. Was it a know? fake? I don't know. It was complete fault. My fault. That's it. Did, Is this something the team has not practice? It's on me. All of me. That's uh, something that I did wrong, and that's all. So you were It was aware. all on me. Yep, number 25 out there. That was me. Um, I was the one that did it. But were you aware it was, it was just a me. fake? Yeah, I, I messed up. I understand that, but I'm just asking if you knew it was I messed we up. We just didn't know if it was a communication Yeah, breakdown. I messed up. Thank you. I, I Thank could, you I, I, listen, I could never deal with this media, man. I, media should not be allowed in the locker room. You want to talk to the players? Stand in the press 
car, the press room will they do the post game with the coaches and like the the top players whether it be the quarterback or uh, defensive players uh they should never be allowed in locker rooms okay never and if they want to see somebody you get in touch with the team say hey we really want to talk to this guy when the game because because what they should have that's that would allow the player to get dressed you know decompress a little bit get dressed you know you know shower get dressed go and do what he needs to do whether speak to his family or whatnot and then he'll be available for questioning this is why media should not be allowed in locker rooms and you know because th this type of because th th this this smug attitude like oh we here you need to talk to us no one cares about you local press okay that's why y'all so mad about independent media because they do a lot better job and a lot more of a respectful job than you do and look at this tweet bucks running back giovanni uh, bernard didn't want to talk to the media about what happened to the he didn't want to talk to the media that's because y'all were being defensive and getting in his face being disrespectful no as reporters our job to see clarity on what happened especially like i mean it was a botched punt y'all act like it was an intricate play that never has been done before and it didn't like it like you've seen that you've seen botched punts we've seen botched kicks like it happens okay mistakes happen in football right say so since some are unfamiliar with players access how it works giovanni said oh now you guys want to talk to me players on ir don't speak to the media even players who aren't on ir but are injured don't talk until they're close to uh to they're close to playing i was pointing that out to him okay so why did you end up apologizing jenna jenna why did you end up apologizing if you felt like what you were doing was correct you apologized because you were getting heat and then you realize these players may not want to talk to me or the team may or uh, may not want you there or you may end up getting demoted to lacrosse so that is why you're apologizing if you felt like everything you did was above board then you would not be apologizing jenna jenna you're apologizing because you screwed up and then you posted the video clip this is according to media espn reported jenna lane has apologized for a role in a locker room back and forth with Tembe Buccaneers running back Giovanni Bernard, the Bucks led 17-13 to start the third quarter. On a fourth down, the Buccaneers called for a fake punt, which not, may not have been the right move. B uh, Bernard fumbled the snap, and the Bengals recovered the fumble inside the Buccaneers' 20-yard line. The Bengals scored 31 unanswered points and beat the Tampa Bay a beat Tampa Bay 34 to 23 after the game media the members of the media including Lane search for answers from Bernard about his fumble why don't you talk to the coaches Giovanni Bernard went out there to do his job now what is it should he have not fumbled the the snap yes but you should be badgering the special teams coach or the head coach about why why well, I would say badgering. You should go seek answers for the people who called for the play to happen, right? Instead of going at Giovanni, Giovanni Bernard, who already feels bad about what happened, which started an awkward back and forth between him and the reporters. As Bernard walked away, Lane shouted, you were also injured for most of the season too. Bernard quickly turned around and said, whoa, wait. Can I go to my family that I have outside and all of a sudden now? Bernard did return after he met up with his family and took ownership of his fumble. Lane and two other reporters in the locker room received criticism from the Brooklyn Nets star Kevin Durant after he praised Bernard's handling of the situation, of the altercation. Uh, we can survive without spoiled and title clickbait media. There are some good people who simply love to cover the sport, uh, Durant wrote in a tweet Monday afternoon. Late Wednesday night, Lane apologized on Twitter for her role in the locker room altercation. Her apology read. This is a long apology. This is a I don't want to get demoted to lacrosse apology because they probably would have demoted her. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, didn't want to post something here until one, I apologize to Giovanni Bernard first, personally telling him I am sorry, which I did too until I fully understand the missteps I took in post game Sunday. 
as I didn't want this to be some hollow apology lacking sincerity, obviously I afforded myself a period of grace that Giovanni didn't get to have when asking him to talk post game. He's a better person than me for many reasons. As of course he's a better person than you. You you royally screwed up. You messed up and you got and you got uh destroyed over it. But see, this is what entitlement does. You think you get you've gotten away with yelling at players. You think you can get away with this time. And the thing is, she the one that posted the clip that went viral. The first messed up was posting a video of our interaction with Giovanni, our being myself and two other reporters. My intention wasn't to make it some gotcha moment, but to illustrate how tense things can get in a locker room when a team isn't meeting its expectations. Uh, <laughs> she's taking a shot at Tampa Bay uh, in full transparency. Now I see that there was no benefit to doing it. It captured him in a vulnerable moment. The optics of it are all wrong and it didn't tell the whole story the second missed up my very defensive comments after my intent was that these athletes didn't get to where they are with hand holding there's there's some of the toughest people on the planet and accountability is part of their daily lives oh really so she wants to preach accountability but what is your accountability for trying to embarrass this guy because you posted that video to embarrass him the video's still up. We just went over it. So you want him to be accountable, but you but but at that moment you weren't accountable for your actions. You're yelling. You were injured all year. You got emotional yourself. You were like, "How dare you not answer my question? You're going to answer my question. You're not just going to walk away." Now she wants to talk about how the football players are some of the toughest, you know, a little bit of shaming there. They're some of the toughest they should take accountability. What kind of apology is this? You could have said, I apologize for my role. Things could have been handled better. better. But she wants to go into this explanation of, well, these guys are tough. And they didn't get to where they were by hand-holding. But you got in your feelings and posted that video. You screaming out, you were injured all year. I realized that it came off as cruel and insensitive. In no way was I attempted to weaponize his injury against him either. By pointing it out, I was reminding him of us not being able to talk to him previously because the team doesn't make injured players available. Uh, the most uh, the most difficult thing about this has been that in this moment, I became what I swore I would never be, lacking empathy. And that was something that was very much needed that needed here. I've always wanted nothing more than to humanize the people I cover is literally why I do this. And in that moment, I lost touch of it. I was too caught up in trying to get the full story and meeting deadlines. And in my own stuff, I didn't take into consideration that he needed for me in that moment. Uh, so I clearly have some growing up to do. You got a lot of growing up to do, but you also try to make it seem like I apologize. But, you know, he's a football player. And, you know they should they should be tougher. That that's how that how it comes off, Jenna. You comes off you come off very insincere. Uh, you know yes, you know you apologize to Giovanni, but you said that you didn't want to become anything other. You know you want it to be fake. Let, let's be real. Uh, Jenna wanted to be fake. And in that moment, she couldn't be fake. The mask slipped, and you know she showed everybody who she truly was. Uh, this is why, again, the press should not be allowed in locker rooms. OK, these guys are in there getting dressed, media people in there, probably staring at these guys. You know what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> staring at them <laughs> in there trying to get a look. That's why they want to be in that locker room. You no, know, it ain't about journalism with some of these people. It is about clout chasing. You know? Isn't Jenna a millennial? <laughs> but I told y'all about these millennial women, man. Listen, Giovanni did not deserve that ba that badgering. He took accountability. Um, the reason why Giovanni got defense defensive himself is because they were being, I believe they were being disrespectful towards him before she started recording that video, or she didn't post the part to where he would feel the need 
to to want to walk away right because again no nobody's going to just uh shun the media completely unless they felt the energy was off and the energy was off giovanni felt it and giovanni did not want any part of it okay and if i were giovanni i probably would have walked away too because you're not even answering him good question asking him good questions you're just you're just trying to poke because that's what it looked like and that's why guys like kevin durant had to speak out about it and others because the media is highly entitled and they do think that you owe them something you want to look at a good case study for the media go look at the treatment of barry bonds in 2005 Let's go look at that. So let me think in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Like this video and share. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll see y'all next one.